Now it's time to see which one we're going to find. Uh, they have here. to show up now because Hellraisers will be starting on the CT side. But guys, we're about to go live. We're five seconds out, and here we are. The map is going to be Dust2 to start off the first quarterfinal of the day. Hellraisers will be starting on the CT side and IP on the T side. And the Ninjas, they have to come out swinging. They have to come up with something big here. They cannot let Hellraisers get momentum early on this CT side. We've seen too many teams falter when it comes to that. All right, and IP is setting up with the bomb in upper dark, but they're leaving my Kaleli and spawn, and they also have over at long get right, just holding on. So NIP just making sure that Hellraisers aren't pulling out any kind of sick, crazy strat here at the first quarterfinals, just taking it slowly. And I think NIP are eventually going to end up at the B bomb site and then go for some sort of execute. They have a smoke on forest and they have one grenade, so they have a lot of equipment. Whereas Hellraisers has a little bit more, including obviously the fuse kit to try and get in here. But now NIP are gearing up for them. Look at Kucher in this corner; he's actually in a very very good spot. If he can kick, pick up the last couple of kills here, C set 75, it's perfect range for it. And the spot's already happened. Kucher in the corner. He line set up, but he runs out of bullets and he's gonna go down in that corner. Forrest and Freiburg coming up with two excellent kills. And now the game is live as Dosha goes down as well. Makulov trying to get in through the window and land the shot. And he's gonna take the kill on Exist. Has a few bullets left, tries to reload. Not gonna happen. Simple goes down. And it will be a double kill for Michaelili and Forrest with NIP picking up the pick Pistol round. That run and gun battle that just lasted forever. That Nip were trying to sneak their way in there. They were the true ninjas. They were embodying their name. They tried to catch Hellraisers off guard by going in without announcing their presence. No smokes, no nades, nothing. They just got in there so quickly. The big man there was Kocher holding in that angle. He needed to land one shot, at least one kill in that scenario, and he could have. So I feel like Kocher kind of missed his big opportunity there to shut Nip down early. From there on out, it was job well done. And NIP, they continue to press forward. Get right. Picking up frags at long, and he could get another one here. There you go. Get right delivering. Yeah, very good stuff indeed. Now, this, these are sort of the rounds that are supposed to be just, you know, you catch them after the pistol. Shouldn't be that big of a problem on Dust. It's actually, especially with the scouting play, it's been proven really difficult. But NIP right now, not uh, showing too much hesitation. They're all going as a group, and it's kind of, and, you know, except for one person holding spawn. And they kind of clear that round up pretty quickly, no problem at all. So, good job on their part. Get right coming up with a triple at the end, and um, third round coming up here. So, looks like a good start for NIP. Yeah, this is a fantastic start for NIP. This is also that confidence boost right out the gates, and I think that's what NIP really needed going into this best of three. There's got to be some nerves when you're starting off here, and versus an unknown quantity now that are Hellraisers who are showing such form, coming out of the group of death pretty much, and taking out Fnatic. I mean, this is a team that has to be feared, so you need that strong start. You need to get that pistol, and you need to lock down that anti eco. And so far, Nip, everything's going according to plan. And now it looks like they're gathering up for a cat push, and this is also a pretty good call here on their part. Simple is going to be able to get in position in time. But they don't really have any huge firepower on the CT side. Oh, grenade to the face. That was a touchdown on Simple. And uh, no issue at all here for NIP. I like the fact that they're going in such a big group. Good headshot for Markolov, but it's not going to be enough. He will be fine. Mike Hillel is scout there connecting, and it will be down to Angel and Kucha. Two on four. So I actually think NIP going in this kind of where they all group up and, and don't leave anyone behind is a pretty good uh, strat in anti ecos now. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Frybird to clear up the final frag. Mike Lilla tapping, tapping. So I'm going to have to see. It had to be get right to come in and finish the job there, but still. Only losing one man, NIP will be fine with that. It's not a big deal. And now they have the money to go into this buy. Michael Ailey's got his AWP, but more importantly, Simple has got his on the other side. Hellraisers have got enough money to get him Kevlar as well, so he's going to be mobile, he's going to be dangerous, and we're going to have to see how these two offers now measure up on, like, the legendary opping map. Yeah, that is the really big difference here. And I mean, when Simple shows up, I I have to <coughs> question whether or not Michael Ailey can keep up, because Simple yeah. has shown some really impressive uh, form lately. So that's going to be an interesting fight within this game here. NIP going for a standard spread early on, nothing too exciting, just taking control of mid, making sure upper dark was and being occupied by anyone else, and they got get right over on long. Just trying to guess the angle through, not really connecting with anything, but it's worth an attempt anyway. Still got plenty of time here on the NIP side, and um, Hellraisers are playing very passively, not doing, not really testing any water's style, just making sure that they're not getting away any easy kills. Yeah, they are actually holding very carefully here, and they know how crucial it is for Nip to get entry frags. And this kind of setup from Hellraisers, not pushing anywhere, not peeking anywhere, literally just holding back around the walls, not giving it NIP the opportunity to get that entry frag is just big. This is Hellraisers adapting their game for NIP. And now we have to see if NIP, who have historically had so many problems 
executing rounds when they can't get that kill if they can actually make it work here. So they're going to try and push through into mid, put some pressure. And this is looking like it's going to be a B-split. And Freiburg leads the charge. Freiburg gets both. And that's it. Just like that, the B-side is wide open. Yeah, and actually the rest of Hellraiser shouldn't try and push this. They should fall back right now and just save. Because if they lose any rifles right here, they're going to be ecoing uh, straight away. And I think they just realized that as well. The, they're sort of, you know, Doja backing up a little bit. And that's exactly the right choice. It seems it seems like admitting defeat too soon when you only lost two members, but it's because it's the B bomb site. That kind of entry is really rare. So Freiburg doing that is obviously huge, but uh, it, it's unlikely that can happen too many times. So Hellraiser should just play it cool and, and wait for the next round. Exactly. I mean, they want to hold on to as simple as AWP. That's the crucial weapon right here for them. But what really is big to see is that Freiburg leads the charge and gets both frags like that. And that's what, when Freiburg is landing the kills, taking point and actually doing that entry fragger job well, you know, opening up sites for his team, that's when Nipper at their finest. So we're going to have to see. Doja may have been able to take out the last man, but it looks like, yeah, it looks like fifth. Not fifth. Well, Sorry, old habits die hard, right? But looks like NIP found a man. Well, I mean, especially if you consider that yesterday, Freiburg had a really underwhelming performance on cash versus um, versus ESC. That was a really tough fight, and Freiburg was definitely like bottom fragging and underperforming quite heavily. So it's good to see that he's stepping it up today. It's really important, of course. Michael Ely in the middle here tries for the flick. Simple. Wanted to return on, but the smoke is going to make that a little bit difficult. They haven't rebought on Angel and Dosha, though they maybe could have gone for... Uh, for some Famasas or something, but they've decided against it and just going to hold on to the M4 and the AWP here to try and see what they can make work. That's Pretty how tough start. Wasn't that how important that third rifle was for Hellraisers? I mean, them trying to hold on to it. If they had three guns, they were buying this round. They yeah. would get another buy out of it, and they would keep the pressure up on NIP. Because they lose that one man, now it's a bit of a half. And they have to play carefully. They're trying to set up for Simple with that AWP. You know, running bodies past, trying to bait the shot from Michael Lele so that Simple could then catch Michael Lele off guard. Little plays like this, Hellraisers are trying to make those guns useful. But at the end of the day, they really want to hold on to these guns going into the next round as well. So Simple, hold up on the A side right now. He's going to be the first and only line of defense as far as this this cat push is concerned and nip still haven't quite made up their mind it seems like the bomb is starting to make its way through upper dark so this is looking like it's going to be a b yeah i think it will be and actually markov might be in a decent position with the m4 he's also got a smoke left so maybe he could do something he just needs that one entry frag and he's going to smoke off the middle doors as you can tell and nip are eventually going to end up at the b bomb site where kucha has the c set 75 and angel has one too so in the pistol round this didn't work for kucha it kind of needs to work this time it would be a great comeback in the round if they could make it angel goes down though kucha misses that shot and now markov has to come in from the middle but it might be too late they might need to save these rifles once again or there's two rifles here Markolov goes down to get right in the middle, so one is already lost, and this is a bit of a disaster for the Hellraiser side. NIP making this round work very well for themselves. Yeah, and he's already spotted out Simple as well. They know that Simple's holding it long house. Uh, the rest of Nip, you see them instantly leave that bomb site. They may leave one man lagging behind just because they haven't spotted out Doja. Uh, they are on the hunt. They want to get this sniper rifle off. Simple, if they can manage that, this would be huge for NIP. Doja still playing. Doja's right behind him. Doja, he's going to get the knife, and he gets the kill. Oh, no, he picks up a gun out of bullets he could have had the double right there oh he definitely could have and simple might die because of it yes he will so that gun that was almost like it was cursed at that point oh you need an nip fingerprint to be able to fire it otherwise it just doesn't work and that's going to be five and zero for nip that is that was such a great move from dosha Stabbing, if he had got this kill on Freiburg as well, that would have been huge. NIP would have been a little bit shook just from losing those two rifles. Well, Hellraisers, they have saved and they can still buy the AWP. Simple gets legged immediately by Michael Ely and he maybe wants to retaliate again, but he's going to have to be careful. Kucha hiding in the same corner right here. Couple of grenades raining in to take Angel down to half health, but that's a great shot through. But then the follow up grenade from Forrest instantly right back. They killed each other. Yeah, they kill each other in the end. But this is actually a, situa a situation that favors an IP. Evil, uh, even numbers, rather. Four on four, and it looks like it's going to be the B push. They're leading with the bomb here as well. So zero hesitation from NIP. They are committed to this site, and Simple looks like he caught one despite being blinded. And this is now going to come down to the remaining members for NIP, trying to play with this smoke. And there you go. Freiburg finds the angle, takes Simple out. They have three members alive, Nip, and they're on this B site. 
This is such a good start for the terrorist side here. Dosha, one on three, makes it a one on two with that great headshot on Freiburg. And now it's time to, for Dosha to step it up. And I mean, he, if anyone can do it, Dosha definitely can, but he's got to move quick. There's probably a kit on the ground somewhere, but it, can he find it in time, kill the two members and defuse the bomb? It's a pretty tough task on his hands here. And they know exactly where he's coming from. M4A1 in his hands, and he's just creeping up towards the window. He gets spotted already, and Dosha, is he going to go for it? He's still looking like it, but Michaelele will shut him down. So no clutch happening this time. And NIP take a sixth round straight in a row here and are off to a really good start. And it's kind of interesting. I mean, Hell Racers haven't really killed many people's top fragging. He's simple at three kills. And on the other team, you can see Exist hasn't even been put into play yet. He's at one, one, and two. And it's not like it's because he's failed all around. He just hasn't needed to put, do anything yet. Yeah, but that's that's what you want to see because the two guys who are sitting at the top of the board right now, Freiburg and Forrest, I mean, you, that is when Nipper at their finest. When Freiburg's getting entries and Forrest is mopping up, that's exactly how it's supposed to work for NIP. So that's a good sign going into this. It's Sad times for Hellraisers. It's already they've lost Simple, who is camping out on short. They may try and get clever and push through the smoke here, and they will attempt a mid push. Hellraisers trying to get in. Are they actually going to find an angle? And yes, they will. Kocher will find the headshot on Forest. Oh, well, Michael Ellis walking in, no oh! scoping as well, taking down Dosha, and Markulov is going to fall last. So a little bit of a little bit of cinematics there coming out as well for Michael Ellis. So. 7-0, and zero. it seems really bad. It can still be salvaged for Hellraisers. This is definitely not done yet, and they're going to go for a double up to, to seal this with. And that's not such a bad idea. Uh, simple, we know how good he can be. Kuch is really good at defensive warping as well. Not so good when it comes to the terrorist side of being the one peeking. Hmm. But if you can just place him at an angle and have him hold it, that's usually fine. And nobody gets late so far. And also, Forrest has picked up an ult for long. He's going to walk right in and take down Simple. Forrest actually besting the... Uh, the CT side Opa. Ah, it takes him out immediately. They are going to be able to recover it, and Markolov is going to pick up that AWP, but he just doesn't off that often anymore, so is he going to be effective with it? We're about to find out. They need something big here, Hellraisers. They're down a man, but they're down rounds, and this is playing out, Dust 2 is playing out as a CT map almost these days, so Hellraisers, they need to start getting, start getting rounds on the board right now. They're running out of time. NIP, however, are just gaining that momentum. So let's see how oh, Forrest, if only he knew. Well. And a bit of an opportunity there, but he's not going to get it. But it does look like NIP are going to shape up for this uh, A split eventually here. It's hard not to notice as well that Gerrit's also bought a, a, a Seuss here. You know, kind of wishes probably that he still shoots confetti just to celebrate with, <laughs> but it's not going to be the case. Got three people down on long, two people head on catwalk, so a very standard A push coming out here, split. And this is actually going to be a little bit tricky, but not with that kind of opening. They take down Markolov, and now Angel and Dosha are in a tricky position. Dosha's going to try and walk out of this, does a lot of damage. He's still got eight bullets left, the flashbang goes in. Dosha finishes off one kill, then Angel to follow up. Great double takes the bomb as well. Fantastic play from Angel. Think maybe he could have held out a little bit more just so Dosha would have stayed alive, but still, the timing is pretty good. Now it's down into a two on two with 18 seconds left. Angel. Was a monster yesterday, but this time he's going to get taken down, leaving it up to Kucher, and he's up on short. If they don't have any time. If one person dies here with the bomb, there's going to be no time. Kucha only has to hit one shot, and that will win the round. He's got the crossover here, and there it is. Kucha finishes the round. Perfect timing. Very well handled by Kucha. That was a must-hit shot. If you miss that shot, that could be devastating, but... They're going to get it, and Hellraisers will finally be on the board. Yeah, exactly, but what a round. I mean, it took down-to-the-wire play there for Hellraisers to actually take out an IP. Sick individual play in particular from Angel. Doja, this kill on Get Right is crucial, and it took way too long for an IP to actually get the follow-up on him, but Angel right there, perfect time to get the job done, and holds it down for the end. Now we have to see if Nip can actually bounce back in this scenario. They just lost a round. This is an ideal opportunity for them now to shatter Hellraiser's economy and just run away with this half. And Angel's going to run right in. Quick one for one there, but there's a second man, Doja. He manages to get the leg. He's got him pinned down before it's just still alive. Not for long, though. A great move from Hellraiser's. In the second they get a chance to reclaim a little bit of, of the, you know, controlling the pace of the game, they do it. They're instantly back in and actually forcing NIP back. So I love this move. It's obviously, as you said, it's, it's pretty bold because you're right. If that had failed, if they'd both got killed in lower dark, then NIP would have crushed their economy and they would have won the first half outright. Now, Hellraiser's have pretty put NIP a little bit back. You're mm -hmm. also just emotionally just taking them down a few notches. And we'll have to see if they're going to be able to continue this because they really do need to. Up at the A-bomb side, it's Markov holding, and we've got Simple on short with the AWP. So this is not going to be an easy entrance from NIP. Controlling long is not always just enough. 
Exactly right. I mean, they still have to worry about the cross. They do have two smokes to be able to make that cross, though. So it's not the end of the world here. We're going to have to see exactly if Nip can actually find it. Freiburg checking the angles, making sure that nobody is lurking by cars. But here is the big play now. Simple with that AWP just locking down a slope. He's looking for it. But did they just really hit the perfect timing? It looks like they did. Simple is not in position. And so is Markolov. Well, the great thing is NIP actually didn't run. They walked through the smoke, so nobody heard them. Markolov would have heard them otherwise. Simple's now trying to see if he can get the hit on somebody. Markolov can't see them either. The form's finally going to go down. It's going to be a four and three retake for Hell Racers, but it's not as bad as it seems. They have pretty good positions to do this retake. NIP are not looking that good right now, but Get Right will take the kill on Markolov, so the defense up early so far. Get Right with a shot mid air there as Kucha goes down. Get Right now with the triple, leaving Simple alone, and Get Right jumps down. He wants the last one. It's going to be Freiburg and NIP. He defend the bomb site. Hellraisers, I think they could have they could have done that retake better. They could have done that re retake better, but then get right happened, and that is just what NIP are all about. The individual stepping up to just lock it down for the team. This time around, it was get right, but that was a crucial round. As we were saying, the money is completely in shambles here for Hellraisers. They're all over the place. It's going to be a while now before Simple can have that AWP to play with again. They're really going to be hurting. That was a crucial round for Hellraisers to win here if they wanted to have a big impact in this first half. Now it's all about just them clawing their way back to get a minimum amount of rounds. Yeah, I think you need at least five or six here, so that's looking Whoa. triple. Oh, Simple with a nice one deep. And second one comes in. Can we get that triple? He's trying at least, but he does only get a little bit of a body shot in on Forrest. That's still very impressive. And you have to remember, Dosha is also up in this eight bomb site with a secondary deagle, so we could see more, but that's a great start for Simple. Michael, I mean, right now, there's another play here is that Hellraisers have pushed into T-Spawn, as we just saw. So they are going to be able to get a lot of information here. They know that Nip are boxed in at this point. They're going to be pushing in right behind them. So this is it, Doja. It's time to shine. We'll see if Michael Lele can find the angle on him fast enough. But Freiburg now knows that a flank is coming through. 45 seconds left on this clock, though. Still leaves Nip a little bit of time, but Hellraisers are playing this perfectly. They're just sitting. They're not giving NIP an easy way in. They aren't peeking to give NIP an opportunity to get a frag. That's what they need to do, because the clock is ticking quite heavily against the Swedish team here. 30 seconds. Hellraisers have played this uh, with really a high level of discipline. You have to be wonder how much Blade is shouting at them right now to just stay in the right positions. Mike Kelele with a good flick there to take down Angel, but still, Doja's up here with the Deagle. Is he going to get the timing down right? That's the headshot. And then another one. Doja gets the kill. Makula follows it up, and Hellraisers come through with a perfect eco round and win it against NIP. That's such a big turnaround here for the CT side. Very well played. Yeah, the man responsible right there on your camera. Yeah. That is simple, and he just opened it all up. Nip definitely faltered when they ran into this. Bam, the first one, and he gets the second one as well. And Hellraisers from there on out played the round pretty much perfectly. They didn't peak Nip. They didn't give Nip a free frag to open things up and give Nip momentum to get onto that site. They just made Nip sweat. And that's exactly what you have to be doing versus Ninjas in Pajamas. You have to make them worry, worry about the clock. Because the closer it gets to zero, they aren't Na'Vi who are in their element when there's 15 seconds left on that clock. They start to get worried. I think so, that, that round illustrates so perfectly exactly why having a coach is so powerful. Because I'm, I'm sure Blade could just tell them, you got them boxed in, nobody move an inch, and you're going to be fine. And that tiny detail is really important. It's, it's not for nothing. Hellraisers quickly checking up a dark in this round and finding no one was pushed up too far, but Forrest was actually covering it. So I think Hellraisers are not in, they have a slight clue of what's happening, but they don't have the full information just yet. So they got to still be careful. Michael Ellie in the middle, taking a shot, but missing it and receiving a little bit of damage in return. Oh, he's really trying to get that shot as well. No, where exactly? I mean, Hellraisers, they've now, they've now spotted out the AWP at least, done a little bit of damage to Michael Ellie. Where exactly do they go from here, however? And IP, they are gathering. I mean, this is still very standard for them, but it looks like they want to start changing it up. And once again, they've had plenty of success on the B site so far this first half. It looks like Nip wants to go back to what works. And that's a smart play from them. But there's the crossfire in mid, and Simple's alive on the B site itself, holding. Great entrance from Freiburg. He did it earlier. He's going to try and do it again. Simple getting caught out by Forrest completely alone. As soon as Kucha goes down, that's when Simple is in a lot of trouble, and Angel couldn't make his way through the smoke to help out. So once again, Hellraiser should be ecoing, or should be saving the rest of the guns here. No reason to try and retake the B-bomb site three on five. That just doesn't work. Exactly, and look at Get Right. He's already out on the, on the hunt. This is pretty much Get Right in his element. Out on his own, just in the middle of the enemy, and he is looking for that last frag here. He's looking to get a rifle off of uh, Hellraiser's, and he spots out 
One of them, Angel crouching on the side. If Angel stands up, he is gone. Get right is just waiting for it. It is so close. This is all patience right now. Is he going to wait for it? Exis trying to actually bait him out with the shots down there. He wants Angel to stand up. Gerai jumping with the burst fire to try and take him down. He's on nine. He'll oh. finesse the headshot right through the box. And Angel disappears. Well, that has such a huge impact. Once again, are they going to have the money for a buy with only two guns? Hellraisers, that's the problem. If they can hold on to three, then they can definitely do it. But it looks like, at least what we're listening to now, it is going to happen. They are going to have just enough here to eke out a buy. And actually, a pretty healthy one on Hellraiser's side. So let's see if they can get a third round on the board here. Hellraisers, their CT side on us two is definitely not going according to plan as far as they're concerned. Already Angel annoyingly tanked down to 50 health from that shot on Michael Eddy. He's had a pretty good success rate just damaging people through, so that's that's all right from his point of view. Not top fragging, but not really lacking behind either. It's a seven round lead currently for NIP, and being on the ter terrorist side, that's really good. This Normally, if this was, you know, a year ago, we, we wouldn't be too excited because, you know, we kind of expect Nip to get around nine rounds on this side, maybe. But um, but because we know this this map has been swinging so much towards the ZT side, NIP are, are actually pretty far ahead right now and are in a really good position. Hellraisers need to win the last six or last four rounds here and make it nine six as a, an absolute minimum, and even that wouldn't be too impressive not right now. No, there are no, there, exactly, they, there is no more room for error here from Hellraisers. And NIP have significantly improved their CT side as well. So when they swap over the sides, Hellraisers are going to be sweating bullets. Question is simple. Now. It's going to be up to him a lot here. Freiburg opens it up. Simple comes into the middle. He's going to miss the first one. He gets the follow-up shot. And now it's Simple's turn to step it up. There's the double kill. Can he do a little bit more? The bomb is dropped here. He takes the blind shot through. But Mike Kelele finds him in return. And now it's the Swedes' turn. It's Doja going down next. And Mike Kelele picks up the AK in preparation for anyone coming up on the ramp. And now he's waiting for his teammates here. This is not so bad at all. Kuch is trying to come up from short. And uh, it's Angel who's down in CT spawn. But this plant for long is so so powerful for NIP. This is going to be a, an insane retake for Hellraisers if they can make this work. Exactly. They've already got Get Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. They've already got Get Right holding Long House. So he's going to be able to lock down that angle. And Michael, he swapped back to his AWP. Or rather, he's picked up Simples. This is a perfect scenario here for NIP. It comes down to Brother Force can hold them off on Cat. Michael Lele rotates in, takes the shot, not going to hit it. And Angel gets caught on CT slope. Forrest and Michael Lele both working wonders. And that was a textbook play from NIP. Michael Lele opening up that site once again, making it possible for his team to get the plant. But from there on out, Hellraisers had no chance. Now, we're just starting on the 13th round. And at this point, this junction, it feels like it's it's reasonable to point out that Michael Lely actually is 12-1-1. and one. He's only yeah. died once in the first uh, 12 rounds of this game. Has killed one every single round. Hits the shot on Angel as he jumps over. And obviously, Hellraisers are going to be echoing this time around. This was NIP's map pick, and it's working out remarkably for them at the moment. You know, this is the perfect start for NIP in this best of three, and this is definitely, I mean, this is where they could potentially bring it to three maps, right? Or at least lock it out. But if NIP are going to really just win this best of three, they have to do it in two maps. If it makes it to overpass, it's rough. So here's the perfect start for NIP. Now the question is, can they carry it? Well, they can do a whole lot of damage to Doja with one nade. Down to 22, and get right. He's hungry. He's looking for more. There's the wall bang. There's the wall bang, and it just doesn't do the damage. So close. So incredibly close. But in the meantime, the rest of NIP are making their way up short. So, I mean, Gerard finally gets it through on Doja and keeps spraying. Markolov is going to fall as well. That AK just too much to handle if you just have a pistol. Simple is going to come charging out. A can't overcome exist in the middle. Forrest ready to pick up on Angel. And Kuch is going to be in lower dark. Forrest knows. And that is going to be the kill as well. And look at that. Mike Lely looking uh, fired up there in the middle. Uh, Michael Lely is doing a lot for this team right now. He is, do he is doing the damage. I mean, he just continues to climb. That time around didn't really add to it. It was Get Right's turn, but NIP, everybody is performing on this team right now. Once again, it is still Exist, but that's not even an issue. If Exist is the one lagging behind on the scoreboard, they are still getting the rounds and getting the job done. So that's all that matters at this point for NIP. And at the end of the day, that really is all that matters. So let's see here how things develop. It looks like Michael is going to change up his position, and this could catch them off guard. Misses the flick there, and they both peek him together. This is a bit of a scary moment here, and Exist getting taken out certainly doesn't help. No, good stuff coming out right now for Hellraiser's Kucha. Picking up that kill. Fry back in the middle. He's had some great entry facts so far. And that's something that Hellraiser's have to try and limit in the last two rounds here. They've got to get this 11-4 at the very least. 
And NIP are coming for the mid-split push here. It's going to be Freiburg flashing his way in. AK in hand with the follow-up headshot. Keep spraying. He goes down. Kucha very low on health. And he's going to fall to get right. It's a three-on-three -three retake. And Hellraisers have to go for it. They have no choice any longer. They've done a lot of damage. One grenade here would do wonders. And they actually have one on Markolov. Is he going to be able to find it? He needs to find the perfect angle to use that HE. He's got it equipped as well, but Simple goes jumping through. He's already gone. Get right finds the perfect angle, and Forrest is holding it. It's down to Get right versus Markolov. And they've traded places. Get right in a perfect position here to potentially flank out Markolov, but Markolov is hot on his heels. Get right sees it coming, lands the shot, and that is it. NIP have just tombed Hellraisers. Another clutch situation going their way. <laughs> All right, so the, the grenade came into play, but it wasn't enough. Markolov just did not know where Get Right was at the end. And a tiny detail that we did not ca catch on the camera because we were looking at the players instead is that Get Right actually had his Susie window run fired into the corpse of Markolov and then shot him. And now that in itself is funny, but it's especially interesting because it's something that Ed Wright hates when people do to him. Dow, NIP, firing squad in the middle, actually Dozier with the return kill. It's all scouts right here, except for the one for Mars on the Hellraiser side. They are they're incredibly far behind right now. Yeah, Matchmaking strats coming out here from Hellraisers, actually. This is pretty funny, but right now they've done some damage. At least they bring it back to a four on four. Hellraiser's locking down the sights now, really falling back, trying to make use of those sniper rifles, trying to get some distance between the close points where NIP are going to try and come around those corners. But it looks like, once again, NIP, why go to A when you've had so much success on B? They really do want to repeat here, but Michael is not interested in letting that happen. Angel doing it again is a very bad idea. If he jumps one more time, that's going to be it. He tries with the scout again. He's got a lot of damage. He hits the shot on the man behind and finally goes down. So much damage done and no kills. Angel just needed one more click on somebody here. Doja goes down to Freiburg. And 13 to 2 is going to be the score for the first half here. Markolov retaking the bomb site with a scout. It's not going to happen. He tries for the jump shot here. He's done the damage. He's got the pistol out as well. But it just will take him down 13 to 2. Mike Killele just played a full half versus Hellraisers and died twice and got 14 kills. Hey, he's been playing on a pretty steady level since he joined. And I think this is the first time I think we've seen him hit like. A really insane level. Yeah, when he gets onto Dust 2, it's almost like you compare him to Smith from LDLC, right? These kind of specialized operas where they really had the opportunity to shine on one map in particular, and Dust 2 feels like that map for Michael Lele. Every time we've seen him play, he has just stepped up on this map. Now we need to see him bring this level to the other maps in question. But this is a terrific start. I mean, it goes to show right here. This is how important a strong start is, because now NIP, they've got all the momentum going into the second half, and they can carry that over into the rest of this best of three. Going into Inferno, where Hellraisers are going to be favored, I mean, it's Hellraisers' pick. That is so important that they just got destroyed on Dust 2. But it's not over yet. Hellraisers can still come back if they pick up the T side. They can still get round. They can still get rounds on the board if not close it out. So it's not done until there's 16 rounds on the board. Is what I'm trying to say here, Anders. I mean, this is a very different NIP from the one that we saw yesterday because they were looking clumsy and indecisive on the terrorist side of cash yesterday against the ESC. They really weren't performing that well. Mm. Uh, clearly, they showed up today. I mean. They, uh, they definitely have a really strong start on their hands. Now, the wonderful thing is, of course, that it is a best of three game. So uh, we've seen this multiple times in the past where one team comes off and just, you know, completely steamrolls their opponents. Then the follow-up map, it's it's reversed. I mean, you kind of hope that's going to happen here just because you want to see the third map. At the very least, overpass, it could be a lot of fun. 25 seconds left. I am surprised that Get Right went and fired. I remember, I think it was Happy who did it to Get Right a, a couple of tournaments ago. And Get Right actually got so annoyed, they had typed in the chat said, Oh, you're still doing that? Like, yeah. he was really upset that someone would go and shoot like that. So to see him do it is a pretty good sign that he's feeling, they're feeling fired up. You know, they're really in a good mood. He's got to be feeling confident at this point. Yeah. And after yesterday's struggle to get out of the groups versus ESC, you can see it on all of their phases in IP. They were definitely feeling the pressure. So this strong start, I mean, this is crucial, key. Even Exist was just smiling. Yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy. How, that's how fired up they are. All right. 16th round is coming up. If you are just joining us, either uh, out in the audience or at uh, Twitch at home, it's NIP versus Hellraisers. It is the first quarterfinals of the day. Second half, first map coming up right now. So make a little bit of noise out of the audience for Hellraisers. They do need it here. They are a total of 11 rounds behind. Uh, this is already a bit of a bumpy start here for NIP. They lose Forrest and Freiburg is not going to make a clean getaway either. So this is actually NIP going for a bit of a risky play in the pistol to try and shake Hellraisers up and really just end it right here. And Hellraisers not having any of it. They set up a crossfire at top mid and Nip walked right into that one. So 
NIP trying to end it. They took a risk and it didn't pay off. <laughs> yeah, they can afford to take a risk because they're so far ahead mm -hmm. that, you know, losing a pistol right now is probably not going to be the deciding factor. But it will make a difference for Hellraisers, and it's something we discussed so much in the past. But we'll take a look at Geraint, who's in the middle, and action could pretty much uh, unfold at any second now. Hellraisers trying to play this one smartly, and they are playing it very smartly going up and short. They might end up walking into an empty bomb site at this point in time. Absolutely, look at this. I mean, this is the perfect call. Doja even takes out Michael Lilly, who is holding on B site. He's going to get the second frag on Exist as well, who was low. But now it's get right. 1v5. And he's on the wrong side of the map. He's realized now, I think, hearing Doja rotate over on B slope, he's realized that this is going to be an A bomb, um, bomb plant. And there isn't a whole lot he can do in this scenario, apart from pick up a frag. And he is going to do that, at least. And he gets a second one as well. Takes out Simple. If he could run to where Exist was holding with the kid. You know what? Hellraiser's instantly fall no, back in place. This happen. is so good, because actually, I could almost tell that there was a little part of Hellraiser's, like the collective team there that said, let's go and hunt him. And I, mm. you know, you can imagine that's the point in time where Blade just shouts to them, play safe. That's exactly what they need to do. Garrow, I can't really do anything. It's a pretty really good headshot that landed, but Hellraiser's, they are going to make it, be able to at least make it 13 and 3 here. And, oh, it's a follow up shot. Going to give you know, Garrow a little bit more money to work Ooh. with. But we keep talking about this. When you're this far behind, maybe you know somewhere in your mind, we're pretty going to lose this map. But you want to put a buffer between you and the next map. You want to make sure that you have a couple of rounds, regain some confidence, get back in the mix. And then when Inferno rolls around, NIP aren't coming into it all high and mighty and feeling like the, the champions. They're feeling like, oh, actually, Hellraisers are still a respectable team. We've got to be careful here. And that makes a big difference. Exactly. Make them work for it. And that's why I don't necessarily agree with Nip going for the aggression. They could have played it very safe and just really locked Hellraisers out of this map. And that, that would have been a decisive point right there. Now Hellraisers have a chance to get some rounds on the board and things can get hit because Coacher and Angel are already starting off strong in this round. Two opening frags that open up the B site and a third one on Michael Lele, who who's trying to push out from Longhouse. So this is actually NIP just getting picked up everywhere. Get right, once again, the last man alive here for his team. Great stuff from Hellraisers. Decisive round, nobody dying. They take a little bit of damage on Angel, but that's about it. So really well played on the terrorist side here. And again, they, they do need this kind of start. It does make a big difference. NIP. Not at all concerned, I think. Uh, trying to take it slowly still, but then again, I mean, we've seen crazy comebacks. Didn't I buy power end up getting knocked out after being 13-2 ahead on Inferno? Um, yeah, you have to be careful. You cannot yeah. think the half is over. No. And I had to I had to take a step back there because I think I was getting a little ahead of myself. You know, the NIP are certainly thinking the same. You know, we're so close. We need three rounds. CT side dust too. I mean, it is absolutely possible. It just comes down to controlling everything now. They cannot let Hellraiser's base get any kind of momentum going, but it is going to be a quick push up cat. And this time around, it does not work for NIP. In fact, they give a kill to Markolov, who had that ump. So a little extra money going into Markolov's pocket there. Yeah, and some good teamwork on Hellraiser's as well. Simple looked like he was going to get caught in that corner, but backup got there just in time. So it all worked out all right anyway. Markolov, more UMP money here, maybe, if he can catch the last kill on Freiburg. Who is on 100 health, and you can see Markov really wants it. And eventually, it's going to be the grenade follow up for 15 to 13. Oh, sorry, 5 to 13 here. Hellraisers, they're still really far behind, but it's it. this is doable. Oh, yeah, this is going to be the crucial round, and that's what I was wondering. If NIP were going to try and go for anything clever here in this first buy round for themselves, as we can see, I mean, Blade is definitely communicating to his players what they need to do here in this first hurdle. But 19th round, and NIP are running a double op right out the gates. So this is big. Here's the setup. Does Simple take the bait? He does, and he wins. Takes out Michael Lilly, but Forrest, he wasn't expecting the double op there. That is actually really interesting that Nip would put both right there to lock out Simple. Look at Get Right sneaking up on short right into the middle. He actually dodged, he just missed Angel who walked through, but Kucha might be next in line and Kucha might have no idea. Oh, that's so close. Get Right just, he's a pixel away from seeing someone down there. Is he going to finally get a chance? Angel might jump right up in his crosshairs here. And there it is. Get Right, instant headshot. Angel is down and he's going to go aggressive. Got to be careful. Kucha's down there. Get Right is ready to take the fight. He comes out on top and Kucha is gone. Now it's down to Dosha and Makalov. And Get Right wants more. Look at the. Look at the confidence on him right here. This is Gerai just playing at his top level. He takes a third kill. Markolov goes down. And now Dosha all alone. One on four. One on four. Alone on long. He doesn't even have the bomb. And IP haven't quite got eyes on it yet. But the further Gerai pushes up here, that's going to end it. As soon as he gets eyes on that pack, there is no going back. But it's not going to be necessary. Exist steps up and gets the frag. Sick individual round here by Gerai at the end. Really just trying to push it. I mean, that's... 
Bit of a wink there. Oh, right, look at get right. Look at this way of playing. If you had to do like a multiple choice way of playing Counter Strike and saying, you know, you go up on short on dust two, you kill two people, and you are you're then one man ahead as a four and three. Do you keep pushing? The answer is always going to be no. Don't do it. But get right's feeling so confident right now. He feels like no, I'm just going to do it anyway. Simple will take down Michael L in the middle, starting of the twentieth round here, and we'll see if NIP's confidence can be broken because that's the key right now for Hellraisers. They, they need to come back and shatter an IP's money right here. And Hellraiser's, I mean, simple once again, getting that entry. No forest there to make it up this time. So the question is now, can NIP actually just make Hellraiser sweat the same way Hellraiser's made them sweat in the first half? Nice, nice. nade onto Exist, though. That is painful. Yeah, NIP going for the Noah Tower down in the middle. And spraying on through on the other side is Hellraiser's just trying to do as much damage as they can. And they're being pretty successful right now. As you can see, three members of NIP have already taken a fair amount of damage. Forrest, though, is here with the AWP. Got to be careful he doesn't get a flick on somebody. He walks right in and takes down Simple, and that's an impressive return kill. It's going to help NIP a lot. That's an incredible kill from Forrest. And now, all of a sudden, NIP are actually in a pretty decent spot. Garrett is still holding it long as well. It looked like Hellraiser's had a moment where they might have tried to push around through there, but Garrett locking this angle down. And now NIP actually falling back close to the sites. Two guys on A, two guys on B. They want to make sure they're prepared wherever Hellraisers decide to go. And with these smokes, it makes it a little bit difficult here to get a read on where exactly the T side is pushing. Angel now setting up a trap here in mid, but Exist steps up, and Freiburg gets Angel in the back. This is falling apart now for Hellraisers. It really is. Doja's about to walk right in. Exist is here on the angle, takes down Doja. And now it's only Kucha here. One on three, Exist jumps up, gets the triple kill. And now Hellraise is in a very deep hole. Only two of them can buy AKs. Another two can buy Galil's, and Simple is going to have to do with a pistol instead. So it's a map point currently for NIP, 15 to 5. That kill right there by Forrest is a thing of beauty. Exist, granted, had the flashy kills at the end, but that kill from Forrest at the top, catching Simple before he can get away safely, that was a huge opening. I think that was the boost in confidence there for NIP. Now Hellraisers, you're right, they've just barely got money, but Simple steps in with the deagle again. No two dig this time, though. Get right shuts him down, and we're back into a four on four here, but that was definitely a bit of a scare there for NIP. Get right taking the fight with everyone over at Long and coming out on top as well. And now it's just Kucha trying to prevent NIP from winning the first map here at the quarterfinals. He's going to spray down into the middle, but Forrest will take him down. Triple kill from Get Right. He ends the map on 23 kills, 21 on Forrest. And that is going to be it. Mike Kelly at the end only died seven times, having played 21 rounds. That's crazy. Yeah, that's incredible. Not the hugest impact, but then again, not that many rounds in the second half either. This was the four. I mean, Get Right really woke up. He had a bit of a slow start in the first half as well. Not really, I mean, playing that lurker role, not really getting into many of the fights and finding himself in these 1v5s one, one or scenarios don't really play out. But then right at the end there, just huge performances from Get Right to put, get to the top of the scoreboard with 23 frags. Now all of a sudden, NIP, they got that perfect start. They needed to pick up Dust 2. Because if Hellraisers picked up Dust 2 and went into Inferno strong, it was looking pretty grim here for the Ninjas. Now they have a fighting chance. Yeah, I think you're right. It, this was a, a necessity for them, but I would have thought that this would have been much closer. Now, let's see what the studio has to say here. Scott, take it away.